Psychology's Magazine. Susie Walker from Psychology's Magazine. I am delighted today to be joined by the amazing, multi-Olympic, amazing champion, Chris Hoy. Welcome, Chris. Lovely to see you there. Thank you, Susie. Hello, everybody. Everyone that's watching. Great Lovely to be to here. Lovely to have you join us, Chris, today. So today we're going to be talking about Chris's new book, which I love the title, Be Amazing, An Inspiring <laughs> Guide to Be Your Own Champion. I go. love it. Oh, lovely, lovely. Hold it up. Let me see. A bit of product oh, placement. There we go. I love the cover. Thank you. That I love it. That's really, really cool Thank cover. You. And I love this for... It's not for adults, but I've I've seen I've seen the proofs of it, and actually I loved it. <laughs> I know it's <laughs> for nine year olds, and it's for, for yep. young people. Um, but you know, but it, you uh, as an adult, I got a lot out of it too. Oh. But what well, what great. inspired what inspired you to write the book, Chris? I guess when I was younger, when I was growing up, I always had this impression that anyone who was successful in life, champions in sport. You know, people who are amazing singers, dancers, broadcasters, chefs, whatever they, they were famous for, they were just destined to be great. They were born differently to the rest of us. And, and that was just who they were. And then yeah. as I sort of grew up and as I, I sort of, you know, learned a bit more, did a bit more, progressed in, in my chosen field, I realized that's absolutely not the case. And that people who are successful tend to be people who have found their passion. And because they find their passion and they enjoy it so much, they work a bit harder at it. And they've progressed and they've gone on and they've become successful, not because they have some innate talent, but because they've they've done incredibly well because they've worked so hard. And so I kind of realizing that over the years, the penny dropped and I thought, well, I don't think, I don't think this message is actually getting out there. You know, you see all these programs on TV, the talent shows, you know, the, the fame shows. And, and I've, I've been around so many schools chatting to kids. And often, you know, you ask them what they want to be when they grow up and they'll put their hands up and they'll say they want to be famous. And you just, I just thought that was so depressing that, you know, we'll say, yeah. well, what, what do you want to be famous for? And they say, well, I just want to be famous. It doesn't matter. And that's kind of what they've, they've been fed so often. This, yeah. It's all about the fame. It's about the fortune. It's about the success. And really, every single one of these people that are on the talent shows, whether they're singers or dancers or whatever, they've had to work incredibly hard to get there. And I think that, that message is getting lost. So, so I thought I'd write this book to, just to encourage kids to get the best out of themselves, to find their passion to aim high, not to limit themselves and what they, they, they think they can achieve in life. Um, but at the heart of it, the core of it, it's not about the end goal. It's not about becoming an Olympic champion or winning a gold medal. It's about enjoying that process and, and about the journey. Um, because the more I've seen, the more I realise that, yeah, it's absolutely not about the winning. It's about the, the, the love of what you do and getting something from that every single day. So how do you, as a child, and for parents who are watching this, um, I mean, I, I was just chatting to you earlier saying that I'm living on a canal boat at the moment because my son all of a sudden said to me when he was choosing his six forms, I really want to go to this special film school in London. And we didn't live in London, so we ended up moving to canal boat. But for me, it was, what did he want to do? What did he want to do? And he was like, oh, I don't know. I'm and then all of a sudden he said, I really love making films. And he's always, he has loved making films forever, YouTube videos, all of that thing. And all of a sudden I thought, I just have to get 100% behind him because that was his passion. But, you know, there was a part of me that also thought, films, what on earth are you thinking? You know, it's such <laughs> a difficult industry. You know, he wants to be behind the camera, but still it's such a difficult industry. And so there's two parts of it is one, how do you encourage your child to actually say what they really want to do? And how do you stop yourself as a parent from discouraging them do you know what I mean because yeah. you're like I wanted to say oh come on be realistic yeah yeah but I thought shut up, <laughs> shut up. Get well, I, think, him. I think you've so, done brilliantly I mean that's amazing the support you've shown him and you know when, when I was in my sort of early to mid-teens I was doing okay at school but I just didn't know what I wanted to do you know I had you're forced to make choices about subjects and then you've got to think beyond the subjects well then what do you want to do at university, what career are you going to go into? What job are you going to get? And I think, you know, when I was, certainly when I was maybe, you know, a very young child, there was still this notion of a job for life. You get a career and then this is, you, you've set your path and this is what you're doing and it'll never change until you're 65, you retire um, and you go and, you know, potter in the garden. And and I think the world has changed. And I was very lucky. My parents, they, they, they were quite forward looking and they said, well, 
Okay, cycling, you can never make a living out of that. It couldn't be a job. It's, it's impossible. There's no there's no way of doing that for a living. You're going to have to have some sort of fallback plan. Um, so when you finish your cycling, go, you know, see how far you can go with cycling, but have a career to go back on to. So, so I got some reasonable grades. I went to university. I got a degree. And then I went for cycling. And I thought it would last maybe two or three years max. And then, it, you know, I did it an extra year, a couple more years. I made it to the Olympics. And then it, it kind of spiraled from there. But realistically, there was no way I was ever going to make a living out of cycling. But it did happen. And I think that if you, exactly as you said, if you have a passion, if you can support your children and help them um, to follow their passion, if they go with the right, you know, it's not just a, a sort of blind optimism that it'll work out. I think you've got to still have a plan. You've got to be methodical about it and say, well, how can I maximize my chances of doing the best I can from this? And as I said, it's not about the end goal necessarily, but you still want to try and achieve the best that you possibly can. So if you have a plan, if you write it down, if you break it down into small stepping stones, it doesn't have to be this big, scary goal that you keep thinking about. If you break it down into just what's the next thing I've got to do and um, what's the next thing I can do to improve to, you know, the next target. Almost on every single day, you have a purpose, you have a, a reason to get up and to get on and to really kind of motivate yourself. And, you know, I think it's great to be to be going for these things. but Equally, you set your you set your target on one thing, and it could be that I was wanting to be a professional cyclist, but it could end up being that your your journey takes a slightly different direction, and you end up going somewhere else and being something else entirely. But if you go with the right positive attitudes and you take all you can from that, learn from each experience, I think it helps you, and then you can apply that in other in other fields in other ways. I mean, I love what you said about it's a journey. I mean, it's the the piece of is is you. St- start going you know what for us at psychology we talk about heart leap it's like do what makes your heart leap uh, and start on that journey mm. but so many of us go oh no but i can't uh, just right at the beginning people say oh that's not for me i can't do that that's not possible for me and that's why i love the idea of your book you're amazing start from the place of why not why not you yeah doesn't mean you have to be um the as you said you weren't the best cyclist ever but you just were passionate about it and why not you and it was it's not just because I always say with writing you know people say oh I want to be a writer I want to do this and I'm not the best writer but I, I'm 10% talent and 90% you know getting up and doing the writing and doing the editing and it's the same what I'm hearing from you it's you know you became an Olympian you've won six gold medals um <laughs> amazing what you did but what you're what i was reading is that it it's not because you're you, you thought you were the best or the, the the best ever it's just that you put lots of hard work in so how do we how do we sort of um encourage our children to kind of go with the heart leap you know where do we where where do we how do we help them uncover what it is because if you say most when you start to oh i don't know i don't know and how do we get over that kind of uh you know i'm not good enough piece yeah i'm not, I'm well, not see, it's, 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 it's so easy to come up with excuses to not do something there's 101 a million and one reasons why you shouldn't do something all you need is that one reason why you should do it and if you if that reason is because i love it then then yeah. why not go for it and and like you said there you know i i was a, a very average kid i loved sport and i did all kinds of sport but i wasn't the kind of kid you'd have picked out aged five, 10, even 15, as a, a potential future champion. And, and there was absolutely no reason why I you know, thought I could become an Olympic champion. And I didn't. I just I thought, well, that is my goal. That's my dream. But I, would, I just want to see how far along the line I can get towards that. And if I even just make it onto the team to represent Scotland at the Commonwealth Games, that would be unbelievable. What an achievement. That would be amazing to get to travel the world, to do what you love every day. And it might be I can do that for two years or four years, and then, then you have to resolve. You know, okay, it's not worked out. You've not, you know, you you have to get a job. There's there are practicalities in life. Well, you know, you've got a second backup plan behind you to go on to, but you've still given yourself a chance to to realise your dream. You know, imagine living living your life and always regretting that you'd never given it a shot. At least try and fail. Well, there's no, yeah. there's absolutely no shame in failing or or not achieving what you think. But imagine wasting your opportunity and not giving it a go. So. Yeah, this is this is a book to try and I guess to go back to your original question, I think what we can do is give kids as many experiences and as many opportunities to try as many things as possible at a young age, and then yes. they experience all sorts of things because you get pigeonholed so early in your life, I I believe, and you get told even things like, 
oh well you know he's not very good at you know languages or or art but he's good at science or or you know or you don't like that kind of food or we don't you know you like this or you like that and you and it's it's all, the more you hear it the more you accept it and the more you believe that that's the case um so I, you know i talk about in the book things like if you, you try something that you wouldn't try otherwise you know there could be a school play coming up you might have never considered putting yourself forward to to get involved in in a school production standing up in front of a whole you know assembly hall full of people to, to read something out or to, to act or sing or dance or whatever you might be terrified by that but if you give it a go it might be that actually do you know what i really enjoyed that i'm going to try that again and if you don't try you, you'll never know so trying things once you've given them a you know proper proper goal then set your set your ridiculous goal there's some your huge big ambitious goal and and, and then yeah. and then start your journey because isn't that what you did didn't you didn't someone ask you as a child what is it that you know what was your goal and you were the only one that wrote did what did you write you wrote something that's like... right yeah well it was it was um the first cycling club that i joined so i was probably about 13 or 14 and it was just a local cycling club it was nothing nothing grand um and it was at this junior section of the club there's about a dozen of us um in the room and our, our coach was a guy called ray harris he was a volunteer him and his wife ran it just for the enjoyment of um, being, a, you know, having a cycling club. And he said, look, I want to introduce to you all the, this concept of goal setting and how important it is to have a goal, have a purpose and have something to aim for. He said, I want you to all write down on a bit of paper your your short term goal for this year, what you want to achieve in cycling in the next 12 months, your, your medium term goal in the next four years, and then your ultimate goal in cycling. What would you like to achieve? And everybody wrote them down and then we had to read them out to the group. And I was the only person that read out that I wanted to be Olympic champion. Um, and I wasn't even the best writer in the room, let alone the best in Edinburgh or the best in Scotland or the best in Britain. So I was very average. And they were all, my, my, my mates were like, well, what makes you think you can you can win the Olympic Games? And the point was, I, I didn't believe I could, but I thought, well, if you've got the chance to dream, why not, why not aim high? Um, and so Ray took me seriously and said, well, that's brilliant. If that is your... Your dream, if you if you don't actually write it down and have a plan, it'll always be a dream. It'll never become a goal, something that's actually attainable. If you break it down into stepping stones, have little small chunks to aim for, and um, and you have a, an actual plan, then then you will you know you will set yourself on that that journey towards it. And again, you won't have to worry about how far off that end goal is. All you've got to think about is the next stepping stone. And if that plan is is a sound plan, then then it'll lead you there. Yeah. So the first thing is to have the dream and then to have the plan is to set the goals. The the piece that I wanted to kind of touch on was that you talked about failure and, you know, and I think these days it's very much about kind of building resilience in our children and teaching them how to fail and how to fail well. Um, what advice would you give parents around failure and help, helping and supporting our children to become more resilient? I think first of all, that the notion as a parent is that you're always trying to stop your kids experiencing negative emotions, and you, you want to protect them from things that are going wrong. But in reality, they they have to learn. You know, they have to to experience disappointment and setbacks and failure, um, and understand what it is because it, that it's not something to be scared of, and that every single person in the world goes through failure. You know, it doesn't matter who they are, it doesn't matter the most successful person in the whole world. Um, they've they've experienced failure at some point in their lives, and I believe that failure is so important because you learn you learn so much about yourself um, through failure, and you learn that actually failure teaches you to make some changes to to adapt to to improve. Whereas if you do nothing but win all the time, and I think there is a danger for kids in sport in particular at a young age if they're if they're a bit bigger and stronger or just better than their their you know their, their peers when they're a kid, they, they get used to winning all the time. And then there is inevitably a point in their teens or at some stage where they lose for the first time and they hate that feeling. They're not, they're not used to it. Um, so I think that, that winning all the time can actually be a bad thing in many ways. Having setbacks, as long as you don't take them the wrong way, as long as you, you don't see it as a, a sign that, well, I, I'm no good at this, I can't do it. This, this, is a, this is proof that I'm rubbish and I'm going to give it up and there's no point in doing it. Yeah. If you have that, that kind of that growth mindset to say, well, actually, do you know what? This is a good thing. I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to find ways to improve. I'm going to come back stronger. I'm going to use this experience in a positive way. Then that—that that to me is the most important thing about 
about failure. And I've got a chapter in the book called Fantastic Failure because I think fanta- you know, failure is such an important part of your journey. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, I, I absolutely agree with everything you've just said. And I think, you know, learning how to fail as you see it as a, a kind of, a, as you say, a growth mindset, fantastic, absolutely brilliant. Um, before you go, because I know um, we are in, our interview time is up, but um, before you go, it, one last tip from you around how to be, you talk about being your inner champion. And, you know, if you were, if we're going to teach our children how to really champion themselves every day on a daily basis, what, what, what can we do? What, what can we teach them to do to learn how to do, do that? I would say that the, the one the single most important thing is not to compare yourself to other people. Uh, I would say that I it's the most demoralizing so. thing in the world. Um, you know, if you keep comparing yourself to other people, there'll always be someone that's better than you, faster, bigger, stronger, better looking, richer, happier, whatever. Focus on yourself. If you can say that today I'm going to be the best that I've ever been and improve on your previous personal best and you're going to approach the day with a positive attitude, that is all you can do. Um, it's it's just, a, you know, it, the people who end up looking around at other people and always comparing themselves, they're never going to be truly happy. So I would say that's the most important thing. Be the best you can be and then you'll get the most from the day. Sorry, I've lost you. I love I love the idea about so you you compete with yourself, if anything, you know, look at yourself rather than with other people. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant advice. Chris, thank you so much. Hold up your book again. Thank you. Hold up your book. Thank you. There we um, go. This is the wonderful Chris Hoy. Uh, thank 